Hello, everybody. Which, which, wait, wait. One second. Quick 10 7? No. Uh, Qu quick 10 10. File. New movie recording. There we go. So, uh, Mark, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Can, you, can everyone in the room hear Mark? Yes, I can hear him. Okay, can everyone on the chat hear Mark? <coughs> I think they can. They can, great. So how about for, for the people in the chat who, oh God, the Whoa. chat. The, okay. Whoa. okay, so the Whoa. chat can not only hear you, but many of them know who you are and are very excited about this. For those who don't know who you are, uh, could you please tell them who you are? Sure, uh, I'm the head designer for Magic the Gathering. Uh, I've been designing magic for 15 years, and uh, I write a column every week talking about uh, all things behind the scenes, and uh, that's my job to uh, turn out cards year after year after year, and we're over 12, we have over 12,000 cards in existence, so it keeps me busy. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, uh, we have some uh, questions posted in our, uh, in our blog here from, um, from various viewers. Uh, okay, and so I figured I would just uh, start with that. I'm just uh, I'm uh, I'm trying not to do any of the like really really specific ones. I I guess why don't we start with just a couple of warm up questions from the room? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jared, so go like design like designing magic. What is your what does your day look like designing magic? Uh, what is my day like? Well, the way it works is we design way ahead of time. So I'll start on something. Uh, big set will be two years before you guys will ever see it. Really. Uh, and usually I spend a year on it, and then I hand it off, and then it's a year of all development. And, and so I finish with it long before it actually sees play. Um, and we have multiple sets that are going on at once in design. And as the lead designer, I usually am leading one set, and I'm on most of the other sets. So in an average day, for example, let's take yesterday, um, I had a meeting for Hook, and I had a meeting for Roll, and I had a meeting for Rattle. So I shake Rattle and Roll next year. The year after that is Hook, Line, and Sinker. Um, and so I'm currently on the, I'm leaving the Rattle team, I'm on the Roll and Hook team, and then I'm leaving the Lion team the week after Rattle gets put to, put, uh, to bed. <laughs> wow. Um, so you guys... While we're running what's called the Great Designer Search, in which we're trying to find a designer, and we're running a uh, sort of Project Runway-style reality show where a thousand people applied, and we got it down to eight now, and every, week they have a, every other week they get a challenge, and then we, we knock somebody out, and uh, so I'm also in charge of that, which has been eating up a lot of my time. So you were playing Scars of Mirrodin two years ago? Yes, I was playing. I was killing people with poison a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, uh, is it tough to have your to have you know, such a lag time between when you design the thing and when people, you actually get feedback from the, uh, the customers who are buying it? You know, you know, here's the hard part. For example, I've been trying to get poison as a major component of a set for 14 years. <laughs> and I finally do it, and then I have to not talk about it for six months. Oh, wow. That's, a, oh. I mean, I, I love my job. It's a, it's a dream job, but the hardest part about it is I really like what I do. I make very exciting things. I want the public to see them. I finish it, and I have to sit on my hands and not talk about it. Mm. And then by the time it's, I have to talk about it, I'm excited about the next thing, because I haven't done that in over a year. Now I'm <laughs> excited about the next thing, but I can't talk about that. Mm. I got that thing a year ago that I finished. <laughs> uh, okay, one sec. Alex here has a question. Uh, Mark, what deck are you playing right now? Well, the, the deck I'm playing are things I can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what I, stand do what I, I do a lot more what I would call limited play because we're always testing cards. And so I'm always playing with sets in the future. And it's a lot easier at the level of design to do limited. I mean, we do, we do draft and seal, but it's a lot easier to do limited play decks. Once the development gets their hands on it and the file gets a little more solid, um, they do uh, constructed play decks. But my file is constantly changing. Like the game of Magic I play is not the game of Magic you play. Right. Your Magic is locked in. Card A always does what it says. You know, I play. I play in the middle of playing. I might be, oh, that's wrong. Let's change it, and it changes in the middle of the game. So <laughs> my file is constantly changing. So the game I play of Magic is a much more. It's a fun game. It's Magic, but it's more in flux than you guys are used to. So when you guys are doing your own booster draft, uh, do you? Uh, is it that you you know you pull three boosters from the giant pile of boosters? You just pick fifteen cards at random from a huge box. <laughs> well, we have stickers. We sticker our cards for play tests, and uh, we'll separate. Usually, the commons and uncommons are grouped together at a one to two ratio because that's what they are on the pack. And then um, the rares and mythics are in our own pile. And so, when we make cards. We make sure the cards are mixed correctly in the packs, and then we we make up our own packs when we draft. Cool. It's. Uh... It, he's the, this is the only person who can actually just take a magic card 
write something on it in felt pen, and it's totally legal. <laughs> <laughs> you can really do that. That's amazing. But, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's it, it fun altering cards. I don't know how real, how, uh, tournament legal they become, but, uh, <laughs> I do have fun. When I'm at events and shop, it's fun to change cards and write silly balloon, word balloons on and such. <laughs> what, is, what is, what is the, like, ratio of cards that go, like, that cards that emerge from, like, your brain to cards that actually end up in production? We were talking about this. I claimed that my article was one percent, and we were arguing at work, and they thought it was closer to five to ten percent. Uh, I sit by one percent. I, I make a lot of cards that never, ever, ever see the light of day. Um, the reason I think they think five percent is I don't tell them a lot of the cards they make, so they don't even see them. So, <laughs> you know, of the cards they see, it's you know five percent. But of the cards I actually come up with, it's one percent at best. Great. Is there any cards that you can tell us about that? Uh, that you had an idea for, but then realized that they would not work in any way, shape, or form? Like, they were just turned out to be a really terrible idea? Well, here's an interesting one. So, for, um, what set was it? I think it was for Future Sight. Um, I came up, there's some cards in Unglued that affected the next game. Ooh. Uh, they put the double cards, yeah. double dare, double blade. And so I wanted to bring a real magic, because it was Future Sight, about the future. Okay, I want to have cards that affect the next game. So <laughs> <laughs> people came to me and they said, our games don't know, you know, our programming doesn't, there's no connection between the games. So we can't have something in one game happen in the other game. We, we just can't do that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, sorry, I guess I won't do that. <laughs> uh, always spoiling your fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, I... I Trust me, I get, I, get, I get lots of headaches for the Magic Online people because we come up with stuff all the time and they're like, that's not how we programmed it, you know, but, uh, but it's fun. I, I've, learned, I've learned what causes the problems both for the normal rules and for the Magic Online people and then I try to do those things. <laughs> Someone asked um, in our, uh, on our blog, um, how do you choose what, uh, what, what art to use for, for a given card? <clears throat> Oh, we have an entire creative team. I'm in charge of the design team. There's mm -hmm. an entire creative team that does, uh, you know, the art and the name and the flavor text and all the creative elements of the card. And I work with them. Design works closely with creative so that the mechanics match the flavor. But I, I have nothing to do. Uh, I mean, I did one time for Unglued draw a picture. I, I, I'm actually a credited artist on one Magic card. Probably <laughs> the worst drawn Magic card in the history of the game, but uh, I did do one. Um, it, was a, it was a sketch drawing of the clan drawing that I did. It sort of like a little kid's drawing. Um, but, uh, Jeremy Jarvis is our art director, and he's in charge of finding the artists and assigning the things. And uh, he does a wonderful job. I think the art of Magic is hands down, you know, one of the best in, in any game you'll find. Um, but I have nothing to do with it. So when you guys, when you're playing the games that you're testing, it's just a card with text? Yeah, yeah. When I'm playing the game, uh, we have our stickers, there, there's, I mean, the way it works is in design, they're just blank. Um, what they try to do in development is when um, sketches come in, the sketches go into our, our database program, and they've come up with a technology to make stickers that look more like a magic card and have the sketch in the card or the final art the final art's in. Um, so the development will play with stickers that sometimes look more like real stickers, but the stickers I play with are just words. They're, you know, I mean, I'll draw crayon drawings on them sometimes, but <laughs> there's, there's no actual art. Somebody asks, uh, will you ever forgive me for that horrible job application I sent you in 2005? Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, one of the things that's fun about my job is that a lot, I mean, you, you know you have a dream job when a thousand people apply to be your intern, so... Oh, I, um, I, I, I mean, the, People really, I mean, we get lots and lots of people who want to work in R&D, and it's hard because the turnover is so small because it's a pretty awesome job, so no one leaves. <laughs> um, and that's why stuff like the Great Designer Search, we have so many people applying, it's, it's really hard to sort of make it into R&D, so. With, uh, with, um, the great, with the Great Designer Search, without going into any, into any specifics, uh, is there, like, anything that you've seen so far, either in submissions or on the wiki, that you've just been absolutely floored and gone, oh, my goodness, this has to go in a set? Um, I mean, well, there's some really good ideas that I think we will, we will use someday, and there are a lot of ideas that we already had that they don't know we have that people have come up with. So that's the more common thing. Because we, we plan things out many years ahead of time. I do what's called the six-year plan, where I'll plan out six years in a row. Uh, and Scars of Mirrodin was the six-year of last six-year plan, so we're starting with the new one. And so I have a lot of ideas where we're going, because I, I work... I start, a year two, I start two years at a time designing the set, but I start many, many years before that planning what we're going to do. And so I've been amazed how many people have found ideas that we're going to do that we've already come up with, but they don't know we've come up with. So, it, it, you know, parallel design, they came, they came up with it, um, but it, it, they match something that we want to do. 
Cool. Uh, a couple people have asked, and I'm not sure if this is something that you had uh, direct involvement in, but what was the inspiration or the uh, reasoning for the creation of the Mythic Rarity? Um, I mean, essentially what happened is we were the very first trading card game, and I mean, obviously that's just done very well for itself. Uh, but one of the things we realized is, you know, we spawned 100 trading card games. Uh, we started saying, you know, obviously uh, people following us must have come up with some good ideas that we didn't come up with as the first people to do it. And so we spent some time looking at other trading card games, and what we found was of every successful trading card game, we were the only one with three rarities, that every other game had more than three. Uh, and what we, what we found was it just makes the game more exciting. It makes opening a pack more exciting just to have something that doesn't show up quite as much. Um, and, I mean, Magic, I mean, I don't know how much the correlation here is, but ever since we introduced Mythic Rares, Magic's been taking off like, like crazy. Um, and so I, I do think there's something exciting about just having things that are, are less likely to happen because when they happen, they're very exciting. If you want, yeah, uh, you mentioned to me beforehand that you'd, you'd seen our video about magic. Um, that, there's a lot of stuff in that video that's drawn from real life, such as uh, James, who's currently driving the bus, uh, did indeed pull two mythic rares from one booster, so there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yep, one so of the things that's funny is um, we had a big discussion about when a foil shows up in a back, premium shows up in a back, um, where is it supposed to go? And we decided to put it in uh, a common slot so that when you get a premium Mythic card, you, uh, you could also get um, a Mythic in your normal rare. So I assume he got, a, he got one premium Mythic and one normal Mythic, probably is what happened. Yeah, same thing happened to me. Actually, Alex yeah. did, got a weird one where he got, <laughs> in a 2011 booster, he got a rare and then that same rare yeah, as I the got, foil card. I got two jinxed idols, one foil, one regular. <laughs> right, but so what happens is the, the Mythic rare is its own sheet. So it's got no correlation. It's just being dropped in. Um, I don't want to get into correlation, I guess. But it, essentially, uh, the Mythic Rares are on their own sheet, so when they drop, it can be anything. So there's no correlation between that and the pack. Cool. Um, during Time Spiral, by the way, we had a, a, a time-shifted sheet that were cards repeated from the past. And the Time Spiral uh, booster, you could, I mean, they didn't Mythic Rares at the time, but you could get three rares in, in, in one pack. Yeah. It's possible. Oh, nice. You get a premium rare, normal rare, and a uh, time shifter rare all in one pack. Uh, one more question before we move on to the auction that we have here. What's your favorite game that's not Magic the Gathering? My favorite game that is not Magic? That's a fine question. Um, <laughs> I play a lot of different kinds of games, and so... I mean, the interesting question is... Uh, do you play video like, games? I do play video games. Um, I, I put most of them on my iPhone these days because yeah. most of my time to play is like on the road, you know, just moving about. Um, yeah, the iPhone game, I, I just finished playing Angry Birds Halloween. Nice. Uh, and now I'm, I'm playing a game called Slice It, which is uh, it's a puzzle game. That's, it was pretty popular. That I thought I'd try, and uh, it's kind of interesting to me. It's a puzzle game. You're trying to slice them. You give you give an object, and you have to slice them so many pieces, and they have to be the same size. And oh, it's cool. very an interesting game. Um, as far as... Uh, uh, board games, uh, I play, my wife and I will have a, we have a game night that we have once a month. Uh, and the game that's really, I, I like a lot because I'm a word guy. There's a game called Word on the Street that I'm very fascinated by because it's really hard to make a good word game. They're, most of them are so much the same that it's, when you find something that's very different that it has strategy to it, it really involves words. I, I'm always uh, amazed, as a game designer, I'm like, that's a hard thing to do. And uh, Word on the Street is the one that's impressed me most recently. Um, also, uh, Dominion, uh, uh, Alex, who's actually a friend of mine, uh, made an uh, awesome game that, uh, you know, we're starting to people copy it, so it's a good sign that it made, made something really special. And I, I think he made a game that's so good that it's spawning, you know, it, it's his own genre at some level. Cool. Actually, I do have one more question that I've seen come up a couple times in the chat and forgot to ask, which is, what do you think of Stormcrow? <laughs> <laughs> what do I think of Stormcrow? Are you, are, um, are you aware of the, the sort of the... The 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 mythos that has that has uh, uh, that has I, I developed. I know. That, I mean, I know it's Stormcrow. I know the card, but I do not know what. Uh, oh, okay. On 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 um on, yeah on the on the discussions of Gatherer uh, for that card specifically the ninth edition printing. Um, there is this massive running joke that uh, I I think it spawned because Stormcrow is a. Uh, a painfully average card. It's a one-two flyer for two, and right, the, yeah. the 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 uh, comments in on that printing are just talking about how it's game breaking and overpowered and ruined magic. And oh. some guy some guy played a stormcrow, and I just immediately scooped and 
I, I wasn't sure if you were aware of the... Uh, the... Here's a, I can tell you a funny story. So Richard Garfield is the man who created Magic. Yeah. And so he had a meeting at a game company. Uh, we were looking at doing games, you know, with that game company. And, and, and they sat down, and the guy said, you know, here's what I want you to do, but please don't break, you know, please don't break this game like you broke Magic. <laughs> and like, what do you mean? And Richard's assuming, like, Black Lotus or something. And the guy goes... Yeah, or the foster. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so we R&D laughed about it a, a lot. It's, it's, we, we, we actually have a video yeah. where... All the broken cards we've made, I'm not sure Ornithopter really is at the top of the list. Nice. We, we actually yeah. have a video where two people are playing, one person plays an ornithopter and the other person concedes immediately. <laughs> wow, yeah. we were really on the same wavelength. Yeah, yeah. That's, we? that's great. So amongst the um, many wonderful things that uh, Wizards sent to us to auction off, um, we're uh, going to do a, uh, a a combo live auction at the moment of um, uh, From the Vault Dragons and the brand new premium deck Fire and Lightning. Uh, yeah, I can explain this real quickly. I mean, if people are unaware. Yeah. Um, we started doing a series called From the Vault. From the Vault Dragons was the very first one we did. Uh, they're, all, they're 15 cards in theme. They're all a special premium, a special treatment we've never done before. Um, and it, it comes with a bunch of text explaining what the dragons are. Um, and that's the very first, I, I actually worked on the, uh, from the Vault Dragons, I've, I've worked on all the From the Vault projects. Uh, and then Fire and the Lightning is our second of our premium deck series, which is an all foil deck. Uh, last year was Slivers, and this year is, uh, Direct Damage, uh, designed by Aaron Forsythe, who's the director of Magic R&D. Yeah, and it's got he, he some, made, he's on the deck. it's got some, uh, reprints of, of, uh, of very, of various famous burn spells through the years. Yes. And uh, I, think there's some, uh, I think there's some new art in that. I'm not 100%. Yeah, uh, but there's... Jackal Pop has new art. And uh, I think yeah, so I think there's new cards, I think, in each deck that have yeah. new art, I think. Yeah. We work on a lot of products, so... Uh, now, did, uh, and once, once, once again, we work ahead, so this thing was done, you know, two months ago. Yeah. Now, this actually... The Fire and Lightning actually came out today. Yes. It? Yeah. Oh, came out today. Yeah, well, this week on... I know on our site... I, I write for our site. Uh, we have a theme week every other week. And this week was burn week because this was coming out, so... Oh, I think it was coming out somewhere around now. Great. So, um, what do, uh, well, I guess we should, like, what do these normally retail for? Um, I'm asking the wrong guy. Oh, I know that. <laughs> I'm just, I was asking, sorry. Uh, I think, I, 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 I'm a creative guy. I'm a business guy. I don't, like uh, I don't no, that's fine. Bought at the company oh. store, so sorry, I'm, I was asking. Should we start something in, in, in I started at 50 for both of them. 50 oh. for both, which is a very good deal. All right, well, we're, we're going to start our first, uh, our first, uh, live I, auction. I do know that the premium, I'm sorry, that's the premium, the, uh, from the vault is a very rare thing that was on sale three years ago that sold out almost immediately, so yeah, getting like, one of them is very, very hard. So this, this, item. this from the vault is not available in stores. This we're, is we're not, it's not available in stores, it hasn't available in three years in stores. Yeah. Hasn't yeah. Okay, so from the vault dragons has not been available in stores for three years. So yeah. just to explain to everyone in the chat, the way that we do live auctions is you post your bid. I know that some people already have. You post your bid in the chat. No, no repeat. Don't repeat anyone else's bids because it just confuses us, and we think it's yours. And don't be a dick. Don't post unless you are serious. And and if we the bid is it just just the number or do we want to say like bid and then the number? Actually, I'm a big fan of bid yeah. underscore the number. Okay, it, sure. It stands out. Yeah, okay, so bid, bid in all caps underscore and then your amount, and it looks like we're up to 225 right. hungry hungry hobo let's, is uh, uh, has bid let's uh, get that confirmed yeah. 250. 250. 250 250 from Corin Horn do you want to stick around and see how this turns out mark 275 okay we're up to 275 from now, hungry hungry of hobo course, of course there is uh, there is lag on the on the on the the feed so we will We'll let it be going going once and going twice yeah. uh, for yeah. quite a, quite a while to make sure everyone gets their fake numbers and attempts and attempts to mess with us will bring the swift wrath of the banhammer. Uh, Crows is very very uh, strict. It's uh, our uh, chat moderator Crows is very strict about that. And so if you try and we've do we've installed on two seventy five for actually a little bit. Okay, yeah, so here, hungry so. hungry hobo. Come on, two seventy five hundred. Anybody? Two seventy five. Do you want to maybe show show the stuff again? Here? Sure, we can show it again. So once again, this is a copy of the brand new premium deck, Fire and Lightning, the all foil premium deck, and a copy of uh, From the Vault Dragons, both sealed in box. So both sealed have, in box we and have kind of an old and new going on here because yeah. this is this is the one that was that has come out today. And one that has not been available for three years. They're, they're sealed in box, but they have two ninety. Two ninety. Two ninety from Asnon. Oh, 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 oh
This is the very first one. Three of them. It was the very first one. Three hundred from Super Awesome Chris. <laughs> That is super awesome. That is super awesome. 325. The Hungry Hungry Hobo oh, really wants that. them dragons. That was a big jump. I think we're going to have to give Hungry Hungry Hobo a going once on this. And, of course, we will... Oh, yes, right. Type in the chat. Matt, can you hop on XChat? We yep. said we do this this year. Typing going once in the chat as we say it. So, going once. And please and go back there, and select that the one, seat. Is there Matt, a Nick, is there a Nicol Matt, Bolas in here? Is, that, is this the one with Nicol Bolas in it? Or I'm shrink sure. the Firefox like, is there? I, I, I believe... Pull it down. I think in it. If, Hold if, on, I, I can look it up. Yeah. This is, <laughs> Thank uh, you. 350 from yeah. Super Awesome Chris. Oh, wow. Because, I mean, I'm thinking that like, this is like... Yep, Nicol Bolas is in here. The main yeah. components of your Elder Dragon Highlander deck right there. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can make a sweet ADH from there. 370 from Trekkie 313. Wow. No, it didn't have bid before. Yeah, try to... I mean, oh, we're right. going to assume, but... Yeah. Bid underscore. Bid. 380, yeah. 380 from Hungry Hungry, Hungry Hobo. Hobo. Can anyone step to Hungry Hungry Hobo who really clearly wants this? And why so, shouldn't you? Uh, I can turn the 15 cards in the set if you'd like to know. Sure, go for it. So it is Bladewing the Risen, Bogarden Hellkite, Draco, Dragon Whelp, Dragon Storm, Even Dragon, Form of the Dragon, Hellkite Overlord, Kokusho the Evening Star, Nicole Bolas, Nif Mizzet the Firemind, Riff the Awakener, Shivan Dragon, Thunder Dragon, and Two Headed Dragon. Wow. Cool. Nice. So basically, all your uh, dragon okay. needs met in one Min pack. Minimum yes, amount of A lot of pretty awesome dragons. And a card that turns you into a dragon. And oh, that one, yeah. And then, and then if, you, uh, if your dragons aren't doing enough, then you just pull out your burn that fits the rest of these. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this point, the yeah, really can be mixed together and played. Okay, guys. Just at this point, we're asking uh, because the, the bids have gotten so high, we're asking for a $10 minimum increase. So. Hungry Hungry Hobo is holding strong at 380, and, and we're, we're going to say going once. Going once. Going another once. going once. Okay. And Matt's going to type that in. Going once. Come on, we're at 380. We can bump this to four. <laughs> Three, 380 is where we're at? 390. 390. 400. 400 Whoa. from a new bidder. Remember oh, a new challenger. Remember, remember the underscore. Oh, and someone else bid 400 as well. Oh, remember bid? Bid underscore 400. Oh, sorry. Do not. 410. Do not repeat bids. Uh, we we yes. are seeing them. Please do not be like, oh my god, 400. Because yes. then, then it looks like you're bidding as well. Yes. If you, if you post that bid, then you are now on the hook for that amount of money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If anyone else can step to Hungry Hungry Hobos, $410, $410. please do so now. <clears throat> Right. Matt, okay, going another once. going okay. once. Going, going once. once. The hungry, hungry hobo really wants them dragons. Really wants to burn some people. Matt, going, going twice. twice. Going right. twice. This is your last yes. chance. Hungry, hungry hobo, richer than you might possibly think, given that name. <laughs> twice and a half. Twice 420. 420. Oh, super awesome, Chris. You know you got to be careful with that super awesome, Chris. You almost lost it. Yeah, you gotta. You you can't cut it that close. You know. <laughs> oh, to be fair, uh, I did do a twice and a half. Hungry, hungry hobo says exclamation, exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean he's gonna bid again? Don't uh, say your bids, guys. Don't repeat bids. Don't repeat bids. <laughs> Was sniped. All right, we're sitting at 420. Major Danger Gundam, do not do that. 430! Oh, oh my goodness! Hobo. Oh my goodness! Making the hobo suffer for his... <laughs> for his magic. For his magic. Should we, uh... You, know, you better get some great deck protectors uh, for this. Yeah, here we go. These are... Are these These are all Are these all foil cards? Yeah, yeah. Like every, every single card is foil. foil. Oh, yeah, even that. Alright. 430! Every... Yeah. You can't really see it that well, but... Mm -hmm. every, every single card is foil. Hobo, we've got a 430 bid, uh, and uh, so there's there's some dragons. I'm g saying 430 going once. There's the burn. Going once for 430. Pretty ridiculous. For Madry. 430. There does need to be a Desert Bus Magic card. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody make that. No, we stuff. talked about that. Uh, it's, we, uh, oh, yeah. Totally we, yeah. It's got it's to be a card that has an upkeep. Yeah, it's sorry, just, sorry, sorry. It's having to pay. Oh, every four, holiday, holiday, four thirty. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys want? Well, no, no. It's we figured. It, we figured out that a a desert bus card would be it'd be an artifact card that you have to you. It doesn't do anything, but you have to tap it every turn <laughs> because when you're controlling the game, you have to keep steering to the left. Yeah, during your end step. Right. The game. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 You 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 have to tap it, it every turn, and then the turn if it's untapped, it, it, it 
damn yeah. idiot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. basically, it has to be something that is annoying, but not actually difficult to do, but just something you have to remember to do, and it's just super annoying. Yeah. And there's no yeah, reason that to be played. It means nothing, but you get punished at a turn if you didn't remember to do it. Precisely. Exactly. Exactly. Precisely. Exactly. 440 there. Where? Oh, 440 from Stofern. Oh, Do who who has bid before? We, we we probably need to be a little quicker on these going ones. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. All right then. We're getting too excited on this. Okay. And so unless unless hungry hungry hobo goes to four fifty, it's over there. Oh, bid four fifty. Uh, don't oh, step to this. <laughs> oh wow! wow. Our, our first our first live auction and the uh, the, 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 the smack talk, talk is starting. The smack talk has already started. Yeah, All right. it's uh, right, really now, laying down the law. Now I'm waiting for Snowfire Wait, to come. Uh, sorry, what was that, Mark? Bid 460. Bid 460. Oh, no. Sorry, once more, Mark? I was saying, is there a lot of smack talk that goes on during these auctions? Uh, oh, yeah. There, there d didn't really happen until last year, but now there's some pretty serious smack you know, talk, yeah. It's, it's one of those things, like Sotheby's, not a lot of smack talk that happens during the auctions. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is a lot more rough and tumble kind of affair. <laughs> Oh, four eighty. I don't need to eat. Four hundred and eighty dollars. He is a hungry, hungry hobo. <laughs> he's gonna keep being hungry, but he's gonna have some awesome cards. And the uh, children will have some awesome. Children. All right. right. Hungry, uh, hungry hobo. Behind you, hobo. Hungry, hungry hobo. For four hundred and eighty, going, going once. once. Matt. Yeah, yeah I've already did. typed in. Okay. Get ready with the twice. Four hundred and eighty to hungry, hungry hobo. Oh. Going, going twice. twice. Here's twice and a half. All right. This is the final thing. No, oh, 490! Oh, no. Uh, wow. uh, you he, must stop waiting that long. He wants to make it exciting. I got to admire that. He's taking a risk. 490. Oh. Oh, and Four the, you can, he just said you can have no, five, 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 five hundred. You All right, that scares me. All right, me. it All looks right. like Stofern's out. Oh. Hungry Hungry Hobo has bid five hundred. So hu Hungry Hungry Hobo five hundred dollars going once. Twice. Wait, wait. Yeah, no. <laughs> he he said you can have it for five. I'm assuming. And that was the only other only other, other big bidder. Half. So we're saying sold to Hungry Hungry Hobo for five hundred dollars. <laughs> A truly worthy, worthy struggle, I think that was. Indeed. Thank you so much for calling in, Mark. We really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. I wish you guys the best of luck. And, uh, uh, I think it's awesome what you guys are doing, so uh, keep up the good work and keep the bus on the road. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, glad Mark. you liked the video, by the way. Oh, no problem. So, I'm glad you guys enjoy magic. <laughs> <laughs> we, do we, we ever. We sure do. All right. Thank you again. Okay. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. Uh, now, for those of you uh, who were in that... Uh, the Stouffer and people who were in that auction who unfortunately did not get this awesome stuff, don't despair because we have so many other awesome auction things. Some other stuff from the very very generous people of Wizard of the Coast. Not, uh, I believe none, no more of this exact same thing. But we have lots more really awesome magic yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do. so do not so, despair. So for the winner of that so auction, it was mm. Hungry Hungry Hobo? Hungry yes. Hungry Hobo. Yes. Alright, so Hungry Hungry Hobo, Hungry. what you need to do, just Alex has put up a little uh, link on the screen for uh, where to email your information. You need to send us an email with your name and full mailing address and please in the title of the email include what it is that you won. Um, and send that to... Do we have options? Prizes. 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 Send that to See. prize at desertbus.org. Actually, Alex has an overlay for that. Alex has yeah. the overlay yeah, to do that. Over. This is going to be the standard Kelly procedure for all options. Works as well. Prize or prizes. <laughs> now, um, Sally, you had a giveaway as well? Where, where, where uh, the haiku, do we have a... Dear LRR, what do I call it? Let me announce uh -huh. that. Alex, what are we at for uh, amount? Donation? You, uh, sorry, Hungry Hungry Hobo, what do you mean, what do you call the email? Yeah, well, what does what you call the... that he won? Oh, just... Oh, just say magic. Say, um, fire magic. and lightning... Yeah, say fire and lightning. from the Vault Dragons. Ooh, yeah, that's a good, uh, T 